thanks FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. They just sent me out this new standing desk. More about them later in the video. I've been working with a lot of international codes. It can be quite complex, especially when you're trying to get compliance across multiple regions. So why do different places have different codes? Doesn't everything just came to the same answer? Isn't physics the same in Australia as it in the US? Why do they approach it differently? It's really quite odd, because most of the time you lead to the same answer. So let's break down the differences to the different codes and potentially some of the reasons why. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Despite when you first look at them, they can be vastly different. They all lead to very similar approaches and similar designs. It's not like in one country that you can lead to something completely different than what you need into another country, but potentially depending on the reliability of the contractors, the type of materials that you have and other elements you may have, there is differences in the code that potentially lead you to slightly different answers, but they're all based on the same fundamental principles of if the structure is brittle and maybe cause an instantaneous failure, have a higher factor of safety. If something is more controllable, you know how it behaves, and you have a little bit of warning, have a lower factor of safety. If the load is known, don't increase it as much. If there's unknowns to that load, increase it more. It's all about statistics and making sure that you're overlaying those bell curves from each side to making sure that you're leading to a very similar factor of safety across your design. Let's first look at load factors. This is potentially where most people start off when they're looking at loading of structures. There are differences here, but a lot of the time when you combine them together, they lead to very similar results. It's just how you've combined them to get to that answer. So if we're looking at Australian standards, for example, typical load cases under gravity load is 1.2 dead plus 1.5 live. Even if you're just looking at dead load, it's a 1.35 dead load. Where in the US, you'll have a 1.2 dead load plus a 1.6 live load. So they're more concerned about the live load factors that you're applying to your elements. In somewhere like Europe, it's a 1.35 dead load plus a 1.5 live load. As you can see, the combinations are very similar. They're amplifying live load more, increasing dead load by a different amount. That's because dead load is understood load. We're more confident in it, so we have a lower factor of safety. Where live load, which is higher, as we can see in all the standards, is a little bit unknown. Because of that unknown behavior, it means that you've increased the factor of safety on those elements. But just looking at live load alone doesn't get you far enough. But that's only half of the story. As typically with engineers, we also reduce the material factors of safety and this leads to a different result. For example, you can have a reduction depending on the behavior. So the more ductile and the more known the behavior is, the less reduction that you have. So for example, while you might have a flexural reduction of 0.9, where the shear, which is brittle and instantaneous, you're potentially looking at something as 0.75. But a lot of time they end up being in the same range. So if you take increase in load factors and combine them with the material factors, you're typically leading to somewhere between a 1.5 to a two times factor of safety for all the codes. So they're leading to a very similar range. They're all looking about reliability, and increasing it for the unknowns and decreasing it for the ones that we're certain about or something that may be instantaneous. So they all have a very similar principle. So something that's brittle should have a higher factor of safety. Something that has a known load shouldn't be reduced as much. And that's similar across all standards. However, despite these similarities, there is some notable differences between these standards and this is based on where they're located and the type of loads that they may see. While we're looking at something that's a bit more detailed, the US code has a lot of performance-based analysis that you can put in there, especially in the more complex things. There is prescriptive-based approach, but it has a more detailed analysis on how to approach a performance-based design. Where Australian standards and New Zealand is a combination of both. They'll have a really prescriptive approach, and in some areas where it's a performance-based design approach, where you can adopt that more complex analysis. Where if you look at Euro codes, they're actually even a lot more flexible. They're not really telling you what to do, but guiding you to get to the correct answers and the correct factors of safety. So it offers a wide variety of performance-based approaches that you can offer in Euro code examples. Thanks FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. They just sent me out this new standing desk. I've been using this standing desk now for a couple of weeks. I can also stand up and push it around to wherever I need with these easy to install wheels on the base. It comes with a variety of accessories such as this drawer and the ways to hide your cables around the back, making it neat and clean from every view. The something to point out about the E7 Pro is that it has height adjustability and has dual motors so it can lift quite a lot of weight so you can lift my monitors with ease. They also have these standing desk tables that are also high quality. So if I need to work in a different area on a different setup, I can stand up wherever I need to. They have so much faith in their product. They also have a 15 year warranty. 
and they also offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you can return it hassle free. They have a wide variety of different tops that you can choose from, not just in size, but also in finish. You can also pick the legs and the accessories so you can suit whatever space you need it to. Don't forget to check the below description for an exclusive offer from FlexiSpot. So why do these variations exist? A lot of time these are built up over many years and they've seen extensive failures. So for example, in New Zealand, they're heavily based into earthquake design. So that's why they've been very conservative on some of these answers and got a better approach to seismic design to somewhere like Australia, which can be somewhat lacking. So Australian standards doesn't really have that approach as we're very stable in our area. Yes, we do have some seismic design, but when you compare it to something like New Zealand, we're severely lacking in the way we design for seismic actions. Where you can see in the US, because they do have more high-res designs as well, they potentially split it off to a separate code for high-res designs versus standard design. They've also got a wide variety of different consistencies between each state. They've got code specific for places like California, Texas, and other areas. So they can be more bespoke and provide more detailed requirements for those local areas for the designs that need to do. For example, somewhere in California will be more heavily based on seismic actions and they can create ordinances that force you down specific designs. You may go to somewhere like Florida, for example, but they're more around how you'd have to design for hurricanes, for example, as they're heavily impacted in their location. So it can be a lot of location specific designs forcing you down a certain answer. It doesn't matter what standard you're designing to, you'll find that you will get to a very similar answer in a very quick approach. Nothing is that drastically different. Sometimes you may need to have a little bit more in detailing, especially around hinges, as opposed to in Australian standards but it doesn't change the beam size or the reinforcement potentially is in it. How do you get to that answer to make sure that you're getting to the right approach? So if you are changing countries to look at different standards, you can approach it using your own design to making sure that you're getting down the right answer, then using the local code to get you to the correct answer that you need to in the right way. They've built up these standards based on historical knowledge and local problems that they have had. So some things may have very strict requirements because they've had problems in the past, so they've had to regulate it in more detail. So with that in note, I've got a video here about one thing you probably don't know about structural engineering that you'll bring your designs to the next level. And if you are going to pick it up, now is a perfect time to pick up a desk from FlexiSpot as they currently have their full sale where you can have 50% off selected products. And you get a further $50 off by using my exclusive code YTE7P50. You can either pick up an E7 Pro, E7 Plus or an E7L.